But you know what's interesting? How many of you think it would be neat to be a prophet or uh, something like that? No? You don't want to be known like Moses? And, and that is the truth, isn't it? See, everyone thinks, of, oh, when you become a believer, you get on the easy track and everything's good and nothing can happen against you. And that's just plain wrong, isn't it? I'm wearing my Joseph sweater. Right? You know, come on, man. He, you know, we, we, we realize that it's tough to be a, a, a man or woman of God, especially when he calls you. You know, I have people that come to me and say, oh, man, I want to be a rabbi. And like, why? <laughs> oh, uh, rabbi, I heard from the Lord. Are you sure? Did you get a second opinion? Yes, Rabbi, you might want a third and fourth. It's not easy. But we don't do it because it's easy, do we? We don't do it because God is calling us. I would turn all the air on. Just <laughs> go to God again. How many of y'all, it's probably so hot from last week when someone else was talking. <laughs> and a look in the back. Ladies and gentlemen, we're in for a rough ride. Please fasten your seatbelts. I heard you. I, I, so after she was done, I texted her. And I said, do I have a congregation still? <laughs> she did a great job, didn't she? Amen. Amen. I am blessed to have a loving wife like that Amen. who will pick up the calling. Amen. And, and put Otis in his place. Amen. <laughs> I notice uh, uh, Whitley's not here today. <laughs> yeah. did, he, did he make it through? No, I know he did. <laughs> but we truly have to understand what it means to be called by God. It's not for the easy street. It's actually for the tough street. Yeah, I have a sign that says, I took the road less traveled. Now where the heck am I? And if you think about it, that's really how it is. When you decide to walk in God's path, the devil doesn't like it, does he? You get on his radar. I know I'm, when I'm doing right, when the devil starts attacking me even more. Man, that's when it's fun. I love it when, man, I, he looks and goes, man, another secular on the list. You know he doesn't like my family. But that's what it's being about, doing God's business. Joseph was given a vision of what he would be, and man, did it not go the way he planned. And how many times do we realize that has to happen in our lives? If we went right to Easy Street, we wouldn't appreciate it, would we? We wouldn't understand the trials and tribulations that it takes. Think about our Messiah. What he went through to be who he was. All right, so how many of you have not seen the last Star Wars movie yet? How many of you are going to go see it? It's, it's good. I'm not going to give you any spoiler alerts. But how many of you realize through all the Star, Trek, Star Wars movies that like they've been having the Bible all the way through it? Do you all realize that? If you haven't, you've got to go rewatch them. This will give you some hints, not for this movie, but for past movies, right? Anakin Skywalker, right? Born A. Who's his, who's his daddy? He's a virgin birth. Oh, yes, he was. They say he's a virgin birth. And he, the Phantom Menace, this is the one I, I would pick these things up as I'm watching them. All right, Phantom Menace, remember that guy? Come on, I'm sidetracking here. Remember the guy with all the little bumps on his head? How many were there? Ten. Eight small ones, two large ones. Read Revelation. 
It's all there. It is amazing what you say. I won't tell you what happened. There's several things that happened in this one. It's a, you know, you should, the force might be strong in this one, but good in, and the battle of good and evil, right? Even though the, the writer was not a believer, you know he was, he was reading the Bible, I guarantee you, because there's too much in there. But that's what's so neat about it. It's a great movie. You've got to go see it, especially if you're, you know, if you, you're as young as me and got to see the... Got, you remember waiting online to see the first Star Wars movie with the Star Trek... Oh, no, first Star Trek movie with the Star Wars shirt on? <laughs> right? But getting back to the prophets... You know, we have to understand what's going on in their lives. This was a time of learning for Joseph, wasn't it? It was also a time of learning for his people, his brothers and sisters. How are we going to bow down to our little brother? Being the youngest of four, I understand his pain. But that's what we have to see going on here. You know, when, when God's plan isn't necessarily the easy road, is it? It's that road less traveled. And unfortunately, there's not a lot of people on the road to help you along the way, is there? But the word of God is strong. And that's what we can live on. That's what Joseph had to live on. You realize God had shown him the vision of what was to come. And fortunately, he never lost focus. Even through all the things that he went through, and let's face it, he went through a lot, didn't he? Brothers threw him in a pit, left him for dead. Then they decided, hey, we can make a little money off of him. Took away his favorite coat. But everyone along the way, what happened? The people around him kept getting what? Blessed. Why? Because they saw God in him. And that's what it means to be a, a man or woman of God. Even though there's going to be trials and tribulations, because the devil doesn't want you to succeed, right? He's going to put you in a pit. He's going to throw away the key. He's going to hope you sit there and don't do anything. He's going to throw you in to prison. You're going to do good things there. You're going to save people. You're going to tell people about their dreams, right? And all you're going to ask in return is just remember me, right? How hard was that? He didn't ask for anything else but just remember me. What happens? People get back to their old ways, right? How many of you have been on that cliff hanging on? Oh, Lord, just let me pass this test. Let me get a 59, please, Lord. I promise. Well, okay, 89, 99, Lord. Just let, me, let, me, let me not have to take the test, Lord. Right? And as soon as we get out and God gives it to us, then we do what? We forget about it, go back to our ways. A couple weeks later, what are we doing again? Oh, Lord. I know I messed up the first time. But we got to be ready. <coughs> Joseph never lost focus. And he could have. He could have given up. He could have said, I'm going to be stuck here in prison for the rest of my life. But God had a plan, and he got him out of prison, right? Then he gets him, puts him number two in the nation, right? And then what happens? Women get involved. Looking around, dodging, right? He gets accused falsely. That would never happen, Right? He had to be guilty, right? They threw him back in prison, didn't they? 
But God's plan, God's purpose was bigger. God, even though he was wrongly accused, sat in prison. Now, I know every time you go to a prison, we have people in prison ministry. What do they hear from everyone who's in prison? I'm innocent, right? Some of them are. Most of them aren't, but some of them are. And he was one. He was accused falsely by a woman. But God remembered him. Restored him to that number two position. So that his brothers, the one who tried to kill him, he now had a position to make, didn't he? He could have taken revenge. He could have had, and trust me, I guarantee you inside of him, let's face it, if your brothers threw you in, in, in a pit, left you for dead, and you went through all this, how many of you, of you would be ready to go roll, put your arms around him and say, I love you? And if you raise your hand, you're lying. I know you did. But I was going to say that anyway. You just happened to do it. Just go with me on this one, okay? I know you haven't been here in a while, but just flow with, just flow with us. But let's face it, we've all been angry. But Joseph was different. He realized God had put him through that so that he could be at that place at that time. God will put us, when he, God has, gives us a calling, guess what? He gives us the teaching time too. You know, I knew I had to go to the former Soviet Union, to Cuba, so I could deal with y'all. Some of you are looking at me like surprised. You don't know how it is. You got KGB right there, right? But God's plan and purpose, now it's getting cold. So, hey, Ken, can you turn the air off down there, but keep it on up here, please? I came dressed. But we have to understand that God's purpose, when he calls us, he trains us as well. Amen. Remember, God does not call the qualified. He qualifies the called. When you get called into ministry, we tell this to everybody. You think you're called into ministry? Get ready. You ain't seen nothing yet. A lot of them don't make it. They can't handle it. But if God has a calling on your life, you better be ready. Because it's not the treasures on earth we're, we're working for. It's the treasures in heaven. But it's such a blessing to see what God can do. And how he moves in such a mighty way. That's what he's calling us to do today. We're all like the, we're all modern day prophets in that sense. We all have a calling and purpose on our lives. We need to be ready to ex get ready for, to let God teach us what we're ready for, right? Because once we do that, man, nothing can stop us. God will be there with you all, every step of the way. I know there's some of you out there that are afraid to come and Get on this bema and share the Torah portion. You're afraid. Oh, I can't speak. Oh, I can't. I'm a one-eyed dyslexic. I don't hear any excuses. Because it's not you who's speaking. It's God speaking through you. God didn't want Dawn to be here today, did he? But she got here. Trust me, we're glad she got here. Right? She did a wonderful job. When, I got, when she got here, all the words were out of my mouth. Just relax. Don't worry about this chill, right? To just relax. Because God's in control. We can't worry about what the, how the devil tries to delay us. God still conquered, didn't he? 
Brought him in the nick of time. Amen. With the help of Arletha, slowing it down just a little. <laughs> she did good. Right? But we were supposed to hear that word today. I think we were supposed to hear that word more than we were supposed to hear my word. And that's good. Because you know what? It's not all about me. It's all about him. Amen. Give the Lord a hand. We can't forget that. You know, I was talking to some people this past week. I was out at a conference. And being the flipping rabbi, guess what we got to talk about? Word of God. I love it. And we started talking about how God just moves in people's lives, and it's amazing to see what he can do and how he brings us into situations that allow us to share his word. And we got it talking about the gifts of the Spirit, speaking in tongues. And you know what? I got to show them something. Because they didn't realize that when... Peter was speaking, he was only speaking one word, right? Language. But they were hearing it in multiple languages. See, when we go out and share, when we come up here, people might say they had the greatest message I ever did, right? It might not be what I said, though. Because God can let them hear what they need to hear. We have to be faithful. We have to be willing to let God speak through us. That's what it's all about. Being a prophet in the days of the Bible was not a fun job. If God called you down and said, hey, Bruce, got a little job for you, man. Why don't you be a prophet? Bruce probably go, ah, uh, I've seen what they did to all the other prophets. There's a reason why Moses tried to make him up excuses, right? <laughs> Lord, I'm not good at speech. Because, let's face it, what happened to the majority of the prophets? They were killed. Why? Because this was their message. In 40 days, God's going to wipe you off the face of the earth. Amen. People didn't like what they said, so what do they do? Kill him. It was tough being a prophet. It was even tougher being a prophet in your own hometown, right? Because they knew how you were growing up. They knew, oh, there's that Moses kid again. Yeah, sure, he wants to part some waters. We know what he did last time, right? Beats up people for a living. So it's not easy being God's person. Guess what? People are going to look at you differently. You better be able to show them that you changed. Because they're watching. Because that's the devil inside them saying, uh-uh, I'm not following them. But we need to be like Isaiah. When God calls us, our response should be, Hineni, hear am I. I love those words that he said. Hanani. Lord, here I am. What do you want me to do? And you know what? It might be some bad jobs. It might not be what you want them, you, you know, you were hoping to be the night next to Moses. It might not be the case. Right? Who, who, you know, let's face it. We don't remember all the prophets, do we? A lot of them got killed young. But we remember what they do in the long run, don't we? Because they were willing to be obedient to God. Look at the early disciples. You know, here's the thing that gets me with people that say that you know, Yeshua was all made up, or, you know, the disciples were just, they were out for the money on it, right? They were going to make money on it. Man, look at how they died. 
stoned, right? Put on a cross upside down. I mean, they went to great lengths to show their faith. Only one of them died of old age. Just think about that. But that's because they knew the truth. And they had been set free. They knew that whatever they had to do during that learning year. Let's face it. When you start reading the first part of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and all that, even to some of the Acts, these disciples weren't the smartest guys in the book, were they? Matter of fact, he didn't pick the smartest ones, did he? How do we know that? It does say so. Well, it doesn't say so like in those words, like, I pick dummies, right? In the beginning, there was Peter, Paul, right? I picked them, no. What does it tell us? They were fishermen. They were tax collectors. They weren't studying the Torah, were they? They weren't given the honor of becoming a disciple of Rabbi Hillel or one of the other rabbis. No, instead they were working men. But those are the men that God used to show the learned men the truth. That's the amazing thing. Then you have Paul, but he's another case all himself, right? And it's funny because Paul was called to the who? To the Gentiles. You had the, one of the top rabbinic scholars in the movement. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Dramatic pause. In the movement, right? Could have talked down any rabbi, no problem. What does God do? You're going to the Gentiles. Your call is to the Gentiles. Let these guys who they can't look in say you went to Harvard or Yale or uh, Schwartz's or, wow. right? Some of y'all will get the, you know, yeah. Jewish schools, right? <coughs> Comes out of the head, guys. Let's go with it. <laughs> but he took this, the average person. So don't sit here and tell me you can't give us a word. Because the greatest words don't come out of my mouth, they come out of your mouth. That's what's amazing when God does it. I'll never forget the first time Debbie Whittemore did a sermon. How many of y'all remember that? Y'all were here. Some of you don't remember her. She was one of our old cantors. And I'll never forget, God had gave me a great message. It was a good message. It was good. I mean, there's just some messages God gives you, and you're like, Yes. I mean, people are going to come and go, Rabbi, great message. Right? I mean, this was one of those, and I'm ready. I'm ready to give it. And I'm sitting back there, right in that seat, and God goes, you're not giving the message today. And I went, this is a great message. I'm fighting with God. Man, Rabbi, this is a me- it, it's perfect. You're not going to give the message. I, I can tell you what I did. I texted Dan in the back. I said, Who's giving the Torah portion? And it was Gary. I said, well, Gary's pretty good at that. Maybe it's just God's going to use him, his word. God said, it's not Gary. I'm saying, going, well, if it's not Gary, it's not me. Then who else could it be, right? And then Debbie, out of the blue, she goes, you know, the Lord gave me a word. Maybe one day I can share it with y'all. I went, okay, Lord. Texted Dan in the back. Tell him we, we have a little thing we can message thing on the back. I said, put on the screen. She's on. He did it. She turned and looked at me and goes, I can't do it. I don't have any notes. I said, you need to share this from your heart. And she did it. She was obedient. And she became a fireball after that. She opened up and she would be able to share the word of God without fear. That's what it's about. Not being afraid. 
letting God take over. It, it's amazing what goes on. I was at the, uh, we had the uh, ladies' um, breakfast this week, and they did ask the rabbi. I survived. <laughs> but there were some good questions there, right? And what we have to remember is that, you know, that's what it's about, right? And I remember sharing the stories of what, what Judy and I have gone through on mission trips, how we've almost been arrested. I mean, I, the stories I could tell you. And someone said, you should write a book. And I'm like, why? It's no big deal. But it is a big deal. But God used it. I could tell you he, what he did in Russia prepared me for what was going on in Cuba. Because that's how God works. If I hadn't learned what I learned in Russia, I would have been in big trouble in Cuba. But we got to be obedient. We got to be willing to listen to that still small voice when he tells you what to do. Don't be afraid. But you know what? Don't expect it to be easy either. Remember when Luke had to go through in the, the, the Jedi training? Was that easy? How many of you can jump over things and lift rocks up in the air, right? Come on now. Work with me on this one. It's a good movie. You got to go see it. Right? It wasn't easy just because he became a Jedi. But guess what? You can become a Jedi for God. You become that warrior. Let him say, the Lord is strong in this one. Some of you will get that. Some of you will get it later. Right? Let him see how God can move in your life. You know, the world is getting ready to celebrate the birth of our Messiah. We know it happened a couple of months ago. We're not going to go there, right? But do you know what Hanukkah symbolizes for us in the Messianic movement? It's his conception. Because he is the light of the world. And let it shine through us. Let people see how God can move through you. And watch what will happen. Watch what will happen when you start sharing your faith to the unsaved. Yeah, I joke around, we had hired a new employee for our company, and uh, he had a couple bad habits. One was he smoked. The other was he wasn't a believer. And somebody said, why did you not hire a believer? Well, guess what? If you didn't hire unbelievers, how would they get become believers, right? And after about three weeks of working with me, he came up and goes, I think I need to leave. I'm like, why? He goes, well, I've stopped smoking, and I've accepted the Lord. In three weeks, we did not sit there and throw the shove the gospel down his throat. Guess what we did? He saw us live our life. He saw how we ran the business. And he realized there was something more. That's what you have a calling on in your life. Let the people see the light. And when they see the light they'll receive the light inside of them. Because see, once there's light in darkness, darkness flees. So don't be afraid. If God has given you a calling, fasten your seatbelts, get ready for a bumpy ride, but I guarantee you when the ride is done, you'll be able to do what he's called you to do. Look at Joseph. Not only did he get fulfill what God called him to do, his two children were even blessed by it, right? Let the blessings overflow into your family. Because that's how God's calling us. So let's learn from Joseph. Don't be afraid. It's going to be a bumpy ride. But guess what? There's a light at the end of the tunnel. Amen? I'm going to bow your head and close your eyes. I'm going to ask you right now, 
Where is your relationship with God? If you're watching online, either live or archived, we want to give everyone the opportunity to receive Yeshua into his heart. Because if you're going to do God's calling, you better have God's Son in your life. With the Ruach HaKodesh right there with him. If you're watching online, you see the information on the screen. You can contact us, and wherever you are from around the world, we will contact you and pray with you that prayer of salvation. But if you're here right now, with every eye closed and every head bowed, and you're ready to say yes to him, all you need to do is raise your hand. If you're ready to receive Yeshua into your heart, let him guide you. Is there anyone? Anyone at all? Then, Abba, Father, we just come before you right now. Lord, mold us into the creature you want us to be. Lord, let us not be afraid to share your word. For it's not us speaking it, but you speaking through us. Lord, we thank you for all that you've given us. Thank you for the guidelines and the beautiful pictures for us to understand your calling. We ask this in your son Yeshua's name. And everyone said, Amen. 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 Give the Lord a hand. Amen.